Howdy, I'm Nick from Fauci-Matic Off-Grid. Um, this is the time when you get to see the projects that we're doing on the house. This week, I am uh, installing the uh, door jams that, uh, that we made and uh, hanging a door. But generally, I like to frame a rough opening uh, and give it an inch on three sides beyond the door size. So that allows for a three quarter inch thick jam material and then a quarter inch of uh, shim space on the sides and on the top. That shim space is so that you're able to plumb and make it right within a rough opening that may not be exactly right. So a quarter inch is nice to be able, you can just sort of slip right in there and then take up the space with, with shims and adjust as you go. Um, in the end, that space gets filled with, uh, I like to use spray foam. Great stuff. Uh, in a can with a tube, uh, and you just stick it in there, and it fills up the gap and uh, prevents any uh, air leak. So you don't lose insulation value, so you don't have a drafty doorway. So we're ready to install it into the rough opening shims. So I happen to have a big pile of old cedar shakes and um, and they're great. They're great shims. Uh, they're super skinny on one end. They get a little fatter at the other end. Ideally you're using two of them opposite one another. Sometimes uh, the space is so small that you really can only fit a little skinny bit in there. The way I do it since I'm trying to work against my finished floor right here, I want that to be as tight and as beautiful as I can get it. I know that I'm probably going to run a bead of caulk uh, right along there in the end. Um, but I start here. I start by looking at the, at the floor at flush front and back. So I want it to be just barely proud of the sheathing on the outside. So it's just a little bit proud of that. And then I want to know that my drywall thickness will actually hide behind there on both sides. So that's not quite making it right there. But that is, and I'm still proud on the outside there. Also, I take a quick look this way. And with a little adjustment, That'll be plumb. I know that if I locked it down there, I would be able to adjust this way and that and still be able to um, hide my drywall thickness and be um, just proud of that surface. So that's why I ripped that, this jam just a little wider than what I need it so that I know that I'm gonna actually cover what I wanna cover as opposed to ripping it exact, having an adjustment to make, and you pull away from one or the other side, and then you're exposing something. So starting at the floor, bring this side up just a little bit. I'm using these stainless uh, trim head screws, and I'm just going to see them, but I'm going to put them in a pretty inconspicuous place, which is right under the door. Uh, so you won't really notice that. I'm going to start over at this side, because this is the side that's actually contacting that piece of wood without a shim. That's my low point, so I'm going to go ahead and suck that down, checking that I'm good on my drywall thickness there. Looking pretty good there. Just proud of the surface. And I know that I'm inside of where that wood is. It's a little starter hole in the top piece. Shim. Check my, I'm 
sitting here. Yep. Pretty happy. Like it could use a little bit of a shim in the middle there. Not much though. Okay. Not bad. So from here, we're plumbing the sides this way and that, as well as in and out of the building. I start with the hinge side. So that's pretty plumb and everything is s sitting pretty happy. The issue is this board has a little smile to it which is to be expected and what we have to do is take that out of it so that all three hinges are in a straight line. So I'm contacting at the top and I'm contacting at the bottom and I have at least an eighth of an inch gap in between. So I need to make contact with my first hinge site right here. So there's a little bit of a push and a pull that we're gonna do. I'm actually gonna shim in this top corner so that when I push this hinge site out to, co to meet the level, it won't just push the whole doorway that way. I need to keep the top corner where it is because this corner is sitting directly above that corner and I like that. So I'm gonna shim it right up here Oops. Right as it sits like that, and I'm going to see if I'm still in a good spot. Now behind the hinges, I like to use uh, a shim that is almost the full, the full height of the, sh of the hinge. So that it's fully supported back there. Alright, so I'm starting to push back a little bit with some pressure on there. I can take some of this out. That will relax. I'm trying to keep it relatively close to plumb that way. Let's take a look. So now I'm reading plumb on the on the bubble. I'm contacting all the way at my foot, all the way at the at the top here, and I'm almost making contact at this hinge site. So I like where that top corner is. I'm going to push a little harder on this hinge. I think that's fun sounds, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's, those are fun sounds. They're a little distracting now. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to push just a little bit harder because I still see some daylight through there. And I'm, I'm counting on some of this stuff to compress as I drive the screw. I'm grabbing one of my hinges. I want to know where these holes are. So when I go to screw the jam to the to the framing, I'm going to put a screw right there so that I'm not in the way of screwing the hinge in. That 
I'm really happy with. This is my little starter hole. I'm using this three inch, three inch screw, so it's going to go well into the framing. And the way that this is behaving, I just have to hold it right where I want it. Oh, it's sitting pretty nice right now. So just flush so the hinge can sit on that and not get messed up. And how'd we do? That did not move. So that's pretty happy. Now I'm going to work to bring the center hinge out to meet it because it's still wandering that way a little bit. Big fat shims. I'll go this way first so I don't get caught up in the house wrap. Let's see what that does. That is a little too far because now I'm pushed out away from that. I'm just going to back off of that and let it relax. Still a little much. Got a little daylight showing up top. It will compress a little bit as we drive a screw in it. All right, so that's pretty good. I have contact pretty much everywhere. Check it, see if we smash those shims too much. And we did. So, we gotta back that out, push the shims in a little further. Try again. Yeah, see how that moved? Quite a bit of airspace in there. That last one gets pretty easy. There's, it's already held right there, so it shouldn't need much adjustment, but with the particular wood that I'm using, you never know. In contact with all the hinge sites or level or plumb that way we are pretty good and plumb that way I have been looking at the inside yep so this side's all good so now uh, rather than using screws I'm gonna use the finish nailer for this side because it's gonna be entirely visible I don't have a whole lot of options as far as adjustment this way and that. You know, as long as I'm touching top and bottom, um, uh, that's already determined by having locked in this side. So now all I'm doing is I'm just trying to straighten out this line. And I'm going to do that um, at more or less the, the height of the hinges. Uh, we'll start in the middle though because it needs a little pushing. So that's pretty good. It's touching in three points. Bottom half looks pretty good. Somewhere in the middle here I'll need to, to push with shims some. I'm going to put three finish nails in it. Just 
Still good. Still good. So you might notice when I'm using the level, I'm keeping it to where the door is going to be. Not that you totally want to let the, the non-door end of the jam go wild, but this is the most important end, where the door is going to sit in there. So at the hinges, at this side, that's where I'm putting the level and making sure it's um, making sure it's right. I put a clamp up high. It's not actually clamping the door jam onto the house in any way. Uh, it's just sort of capturing it there so it doesn't fall over while I work on it. Alright, you can probably tell by the floor clearing that I'm doing. Uh, it's time to put that door up and see how we did. Since we just did this by the numbers, meaning taking measurements, um, it is quite likely that I'll have a hard time making all of those pins right at first. What I'll do is I'll get one going and then see how the others look. Um, and I keep the screw gun handy. Uh, it's, it's unlikely that the hinge is totally out of place, um, but to help make the pin, I might just loosen a, the screws so it can wiggle a little bit to make the pin and then tighten the screws back up. Welcome. Um, so it turned out pretty well. I think that um, it's it's dipping that way just a little bit. I think that's mostly a hinge issue, and that I don't have all the screws in it just yet. Uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with with that fit. So when I know that I don't need to move any hinges or make any adjustments, I drive a three-inch screw through the hinge through the door jam through the shim and all the way into the rough framing to uh, really hold that hinge to the building. Let's look at it. What do we think? I like it. That's a pretty door, huh? Yeah. So the next part of the process is putting on the door stop. Um, it's a piece that I've milled myself, but um, you can make it out of anything. I make it half of an inch thick by anywhere from inch and a quarter to inch and three quarter wide. I went kind of on the narrow side. Um, we have a little bit of work to dress that up and then it's just trimming out the inside of the doorway with that. And that's what the door is gonna 
uh, actually close against. Putting the door stop on inch and seven eighths this way. The door is inch and three quarters. That gives me an eighth of an inch for uh, the weather stripping that I'm gonna put in. I'm gonna put a big D-shaped squishy piece uh, right up against that door stop. So an eighth of an inch of space will be plenty. Hard to use that tool right there. All right, I'll do my top piece first. I'm gonna miter the corners. That may or may not be the recommended way to go, but that's the way I do it. 35 and 11 sixteenths. That's a good one. I'm just using the same finish nailer. I'm gonna say 79 and a quarter. Well, there you have it. That's all the parts to our uh, to our doors here. Uh, hope it was helpful. Uh, hope it's helpful to see uh, how I solve any given problem. Uh, it's undoubtedly different than uh, the problems that you'll encounter when you're doing it. Um, but I just thought I'd share with you. All right, take it easy.